Hello and welcome back to the Stevenson Weekender sailboat build. In this episode I'm going to work on the steering for the boat and the first thing I'm going to build is the rudder box. These cheek pieces are made out of half inch plywood and I used that template that I printed off of the big print program that I used in the last uh, episode. On this first piece I'll try to get as close as I can to the lines with the bandsaw and then I'll cut the straight parts with the mini track saw. On the second piece I won't worry about getting quite as close to the line because I'm going to use a flush trim router bit later on to get the pieces to match up. I'll use this drum sander to get the first piece right up to my line. I didn't have any double-sided tape, so I'm going to use this trick where you use uh, painter's tape on the opposing parts and then use some CA glue to uh, mate the pieces together temporarily while you, you flush trim them. This method works well and now I have two identical pieces. While the pieces are still matched together, I'll drill the hole that the rudder will pivot in. And now that that's done, I'll get the two pieces split apart. I'm going to rip the partitions for the rudder box out of some one inch stock. I'll rip down some of this mahogany I had left over from the rafters of the cabin to make the arm for the tiller. The plans call for cutting this angle on the front of the tiller where the attachment point for the steering will be. The back end of the tiller arm requires a tenon, so I'll get that cut in now. Okay, now that all the pieces are cut, I'm going to start getting them put together. I'm using thickened epoxy and then using that uh, 18 gauge brad nailer to hold the pieces in place. Before I join the two halves together, I'm going to coat the inside with this 2 to 1 epoxy from Total Boat. This should provide some waterproofing for the exposed wood pieces. Now the last thing to get done before I join the two halves together is these eye bolts that will act as pivot points uh, for the rudder box against the stern of the boat. Now that the two halves are together, I'm going to use this quarter inch round over bit to break all the sharp edges of the router box. Now I'll set the router box aside and get to work on the actual rudder itself. 
the edges of the rudder have to be beveled uh, like a knife to improve the hydrodynamics. So I started out using this compass to make a mark two inches from the edge and then proceeded to use a combination of the power planer, the hand planer, and the belt sander to get that edge beveled down. I made a mark at the midway point on the thickness of the board and then would work my bevel down to that line. This bevel was a moderate amount of work, but it turned out good in the end. I then got the hole for the pivot drilled, and here's how the rudder and the rudder box fit together. This system allows the rudder to be pivoted up when you're in shallow water, and also allows the rudder to be removed completely if it's on the trailer. I decided to put a layer of fiberglass on the rudder just to strengthen it. I had some leftover 6 ounce cloth that I used. I'm again using some 2 to 1 uh, high performance epoxy from Total Boat. Once the epoxy had cured, I used the sheetrock knife and the oscillating saw to trim it up and then got everything sanded and ready for primer. For that I'm going to use this Total Protect barrier coat system. It is a two-part epoxy primer. They mix up in a three to one ratio. This stuff was really thick but it went on evenly and I was pleased with the coverage. So while that primer is left to cure, I move back down to the boat shed and I'm going to cut the hatch to allow access to the steering. Here I'm going to use some of this leftover 1x4 material to create a lip around the hatch opening. I mark the curve of the deck on that board and then use the bandsaw to cut along that. Before I glued those lips in place, I decided to cut the hole for the uh, tiller arm on the rudder box. Now I'm going to get the eye bolts in place that will act as the pivot point with the rudder box. I started out with a small pilot hole and then I'm using this oversized half inch drill to drill out the openings for the eye bolts. This lower eye bolt is blind so I use the spade bit to create an access hole that will allow me to put the nut on the, on the eye bolt. 
This hole will later get filled up with thickened epoxy and painted over. Because these eye bolts will be underwater, I'm using a method uh, known as drill, fill, and drill to protect the exposed wood from water damage. All this means is that I started out with an oversized half inch hole that I'll fill with epoxy and allow that to cure. I'll then come back with the 5 16 inch drill bit and use that to drill the actual hole for the eye bolt. This method leaves a layer of epoxy between the bolt and the wood so the wood doesn't get exposed to any water to cause rot. Now I'll move on to getting the steering mechanism in place. The plans call for a steering wheel instead of a traditional tiller. This allows more room in the cockpit than a traditional tiller would. Now the plans call for this steering column to be pivoted on a lag bolt through the transom. I didn't like that idea. Instead, I'm going to have it pivot in this bearing block, but in order to account for the angle of the steering column where it meets the transom, I had to cut this wedge that will get mounted behind the bearing block and cause it to set at the right angle. The steering will be accomplished by wrapping a cable around that steering column and then uh, through some pulleys and back to the tiller arm. I couldn't find any U-bolts of the proper size uh, for the pulley mounts and so I made these out of uh, all thread and then covered the apex there where the pulley is going to be with some heat shrink material. These pulleys get mounted through the lower rub rail of the boat so here I'm using this jig and a Forstner bit to enlarge those previous screw holes to allow room for the washer and the nut. And by jig, I just mean that board with a hole in it that keeps the Forstner bit from wandering. And here's what that U-bolt and pulley look like in place. And then I did the same thing and installed the U-bolt uh, and pulley on the other side of the boat. I'm going to use some of this 1 8 inch by 3 quarter inch aluminum flat bar to create some pivot brackets that I'll show you in a minute. Everything will be attached to this pivot point on the front end of the tiller arm that is part of the rudder box. So with that bolt through the hole I attach those aluminum brackets that I just made and I'll keep those in place with two nuts that are bound against each other. Now I'll get the rudder box assembly put in place. It pivots on a 3 8 inch all thread encased in a half inch piece of vinyl tubing. I'm using 1 8 inch wire rope cable and I'm going to use a swage clamp to create the eyes on the ends. I got the swage clamp and these ferrules and the thimbles for the eyes all on Amazon for relatively cheap. Here I'm marking the other end of the cable where I'll need to put the eye for the other side. And then once I had the length marked, I had to take out that U-bolt with the pulley in order to have access to swage the eye on the other end of the cable. But once I got that done, I got the U-bolt and pulley put back in place. The nuts tightened there on the rub rail. I was then able to get everything hooked up and here's how the steering works. That cable wraps around the steering column and then when it pivots uh, clockwise or counterclockwise it pulls the cable which in turn goes through those pulleys and then pulls the tiller arm left or right. So I still have to build the steering wheel itself and I have a buddy who's going to 3D print me a bushing that'll go between the steering column and that hole in the lazarette front. But I think I'll leave this video here, and I hope you'll join me next time when we continue to build the Stevenson Weekender sailboat.